but you lot, hope you're ready. We've got a new car on the channel, new build. We're gonna be doing this a little bit different. I'm gonna be showing you all the damage on this new car, but I've only got three days to get this build knocked out. So let's go. So guys, this is a 2016 BMW 2 Series. As you can see, it's got some frontal damage right there. This car's been sat here for a bit. I've got all the parts that I need in the garage. We're gonna be stripping this down and I'm gonna be doing this a little bit different. As I said, I've set myself three days, a three day limit to get the car from this state to being fully rebuilt. So we're gonna get straight into it. Let's tear down the damage. But first, let me introduce you to the new build on the channel. Alright so guys, slow motion shots out of the way, we're going to start right here with all the brunt of the damage. As you can see, it looks like it's hit a pole or something has hit just left of centre. Um, normally, when it hits just off centre like that, it can push the chassis leg either that way or believe it or not, it can push that chassis leg that way. Even from this angle, just depending on the angle that the car hit, whatever it's ran into. Um, but as you can see, this headlight is completely gone. It's busted in there bonnet is completely gone front bumper is completely gone and that front slam panel what is left of it as you can see this is the bottom section and this is the middle section it's completely gone these are the things that i saw off the rip when i got this car for all you number crunches this car was around six grand from iaa auctions here in the uk and it came from a place called canvey island which is over there in essex um, so it's not a co park car just wanted to put that out there as you can see, this headlight, we're going to try to fix that, sand it back a bit, resurface that, and hopefully that should be able to come back okay. On the passenger side, this wing is fine, passenger door is fine, passenger quarter is fine. Going back around, everything on the rear end is fine. There's a 218, so Euless compliant, petrol, manual, 2 litre. Um, it's got low mileage, the interior, very, very clean. Back to this rear quarter here, no damage on that rear quarter. Driver side door, no damage. Driver side wing, it's got a slight little dent. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I can see that. It's got a slight little dent there, but the damage is nice and localized. I don't like getting cars that's got damage here, there, and everywhere because it's gonna add up when you come to repair that car. So I like to just get damaged cars that's got localized damage, and that's what this car's had. Let's go check out the interior. Like I showed you before, interior is very clean. Check that out. It reminds me of my M135i, which is weird. It's like BMW, they put out the facelift interior, but then some of the facelifted cars have still got the pre-facelift interior, which is a bit weird. But yeah, I like to have a look around, make sure I can't find anything. So guys, like I said, we're doing this nice and quick. It's like a bit of high-speed dating, high-speed salvage. That's what you're getting here from Salvage Nation. And I've shown you everything on the car. So let's get the car in the garage start to tear down this damage. All right guys, so the car said it ran and drive. Um, it's come with just the one key. Stick the key there, it's keyless. So start it. It seems to be starting okay, but it's engine light is on and it's idling very, very rough. Now I'm hoping that that's because the red pack or I don't know if it's got an intercooler. I'm hoping that that's because something in the front is damaged and not connected. Maybe it's a sensor with that front damage. I don't know. Um, coolant level is low, but yeah, those rear parking sensors seem to be working. But we will investigate it more once we strip down the front. But I need both hands to get this car out of here, so it's a bit tight around the back. I'll catch up with you guys once I'm in the garage. So we managed to get the car in the garage. Like I said earlier, the engine was running a little bit rough, but we'll investigate that later. The first step was trying to open this bonnet. Now the problem here is, because of the spot where the impact had been sustained, that's exactly the same location where the bonnet lock is and everything was completely jammed up. So I had to get on top, give it a little bit of brute force to kind of straighten it, trying to give us a little bit of space to try to get it open, but that didn't work. So I turned my attention to removing the front bumper in the hopes that I can access that lock. And when that didn't work, we just had to cut it. And I'll explain why later on as well. 
but with that bonnet open you can see the true extent of the damage and it's a little bit worse than I expected as you can see everything is completely mangled I began to work my way around this bumper removing this broken bumper bearing in mind that I'm going to be able to use some of these clips and fog lights and other pieces of plastic from this bumper so I'm going to store that away for safekeeping next up was removing the broken front slam panel and as you can see everything is in bits now one positive was this passenger headlight seems to be okay it's just got a few scuff marks on the front and we'll be able to fix that later on but i removed that and i kept that safe all right my people so we're making great progress getting everything torn down on the damaged sections of the car um, i just want to point out a few things so this actually stuck down here so as you can see this is the bonnet hook this bonnet hook was still caught in the bonnet lock now the reason why we had to cut it is in the accident as you can see it's pushed this area back and it dislodged this mechanism this is the wire that goes to the latch inside the car so this is no longer functional so it wouldn't release this bonnet hook which wouldn't release the bonnet now we've got a replacement bonnet and the replacement bonnet has got two new hooks so that's why i went ahead and i cut that so i can start to tear down the front end um, everything on the front is looking <laughs> messed up but i'm happy because it's a 118 um, and it's a turbo i didn't realize that so that confirms it right there twin power turbo and this is the intercooler which is completely smashed i've got a new rad pack in the boot um, so because this intercooler is smashed that's probably why i'm assuming that's why the engine is running very very rough everything else on this side as expected is okay i don't need to do anything here other than replace everything once i get that broken front slam panel out and get the replacement one on and that's what i want to do um as you can see this top chassis arm there's no damage there there is some slight damage to this chassis arm but it shouldn't be anything too tough to either get a body jack push it out or get the body jig and pull it backwards so we'll make up our minds once we get to that part of the video so guys we're making great progress this is day one i don't know how much we're going to get through i'm going to continue plowing through we're going to see how far i can get with getting everything torn down if i get everything torn down and i can start to reassemble then i will if i can't then we'll continue in day two but this is day one of three let's go Right, so with the bonnet open and the front bumper removed, I had access to all these nuts and bolts to remove the front slam panel, which is screwed into the front chassis legs. If you look here, I'm removing these giant bolts and these are the main structural bolts that holds that front slam panel in place. Almost there, but down below, there are two smaller bolts that kind of add a bit more support for that front slam panel. Once I removed them, things became a lot easier to remove. Next up, I turn my attention to the air box. Now this is for two reasons. I want to get it out of the way so I don't cause any damage, but I also wanted to inspect it to see if it sustained any damage during the accident. It was no damage there, so I just continued to remove all of these plugs, sockets, and electronics before finally removing that front slam panel. Now with the front slam panel out of the way, it gave me even more access to the broken radiators. Now, I hate removing these, and if you're in the game and you know how to remove these, they are absolutely a task to remove. But there you have it, everything was removed, and once again, you can see the brunt of the damage. Okay, so we're making great progress on the first phase of any build which is stripping down all the damaged parts I know what I need and I had made an order so we got a ton of parts in the back like I said now that we've stripped down everything I'm happy there's no damage to that engine and the only damage that I can see is the top chassis arm which we could see from before so we haven't had any nasty surprises and now we can move on to the second phase which is getting that arm pulled back into the correct position and then we can continue with reassembly so we're making good progress this is still day one let's continue now 
I turned my attention to that top chassis arm because that was bent. Now a lot of work had been done off camera. Um, I had to go away for a few things, but I wanted to just show you the final parts of me repairing this top chassis arm. And as you can see, slowly, slowly, by applying that hydraulic pressure, I'm pushing it back to the correct position. Now, there's only one way to find out if it is in the correct position, and that is measuring it across, kind of like in an X formation, to make sure that the front end is all squared up. I know for a fact that the other side has not moved, so I need to match the left side to the right side and keep checking the measurements. Measure twice, push once. That is the aim. But sometimes you have to measure, push, measure, push. Hopefully that makes sense. All right guys, so have a look at this arm now. Just a little bit of a pull on the old jig right here. I managed to find a secure spot at the back of the bulkhead. It wasn't touching any engine components. I made a nice seat in bed there and it gave me something to push up against and I was able to push this back. This is quite soft metal, so it came back quite easily. And then I went ahead and I got my measuring tape to make sure that the, um, the measurements on both sides were equal, making sure that the front end is all square. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna just size up the replacement front slam panel and then we can call it a day on day one. Now I managed to pick up a replacement front slam panel from eBay and this cost me around 250 quid. Um, time to do a test fit. So if my measurements are correct, this should just slot straight in and it should line up perfectly both at the top and at the bottom, so let's see. Now because I did my measurements twice and I knew that they were pretty accurate, I was pretty confident that this should just slide straight in. And as you can see, it needed a little bit of adjusting, but pretty much it went straight in as planned. Guys, check this out. And there you have it guys, the proof is in the pudding. Have a look at the lines, have a look at the holes. Everything is lining up exactly where it should be. And I was very happy to see that my lines and my measurements were on point. All right, you guys, so have a quick look. I've gone in in the slots at the bottom, no problem. Have a look at the top, one and two, everything's lining up fine. And if I go over to this side, one and two is lining up fine. Now, as you can see, the hole at the top is a bit bigger. That's to give you space to adjust the front end. I'm happy with the way that chassis arm has come back. There's literally almost no signs that it was even damaged in the first place. Now, I can't continue because I need to get the rad pack and I'm gonna collect that later on um, tomorrow. So, this is where we're gonna end this episode. That's it for episode one. Oh, come on, man. We've made a ton, 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 ton. We made a ton of progress, and it's only day one. All right, you guys, have a look at this roof. Have a look at the car now. I went ahead and removed that busted bonnet, but the front panel fits, and we are ready to move into day two. And that's coming up tomorrow um, for me, um, and I'm going to try to get it out to you guys as soon as possible. So this has been the new build. We've stripped it down. I showed you around, and we got some good news on the damage. And this is where we're gonna end this episode. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press the like button. And if you're watching this, you're not subscribed because a lot of you watch my content and you're not subscribed. Subscribe to the thing, man. Let's, let's, let's grow Salvage Nation and get it where it deserves. But anyway, enough of that. I'll catch you guys in the next one. So, mom, like I always say, keep it moving, guys. I'm out. Guys, thank you for watching. Click here to see what YouTube thinks you should watch. Click here to watch one of my previous episodes. And like it said there, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. We out.